After wheat and barley, canola is our third largest broadacre crop. And this season, a record area has been sown to genetically modified varieties. That's partly because Western Australian growers have been able to plant commercial GM crops for the first time this year. But also because there's been a steady take-up of the new technology in the eastern states. Caught in the middle, as it were, are South Australia's growers, prohibited by law from planting GM canola, but virtually surrounded by those who can. Today we've decided to start seeding our Roundup Ready canola. We're dry seeding. At Meckering, a couple of hours east of Perth, there wasn't the ideal start to the cropping season. Like most farmers, John Snook had hoped for late April rain, so the weeds would pop up in the paddocks and they could be knocked down before putting the canola seed into damp soil. But the opening autumn rains hadn't come by the time he wanted to sow. He put the canola in anyway, with the knowledge that this year there was another tool in the box. We're sowing Roundup Ready canola shallow. We're testing it uh, for its ability to be dry sown, and we think this is a perfect scenario for Roundup Ready canola. You see, this variety has been genetically modified to withstand sprays of glyphosate, the active ingredient in the herbicide Roundup. If the rain falls after sowing and the weeds take off, John Snook can spray the crop with glyphosate. The weeds will die, but the canola will keep on growing. In New South Wales and Victoria, farmers have been allowed to grow genetically modified canola since 2008. The South Australian government is holding off until at least 2014. And this year is the first time farmers in the West have been able to plant commercial crops of GM canola. It's grown in 150 million hectares in 23 countries around the world for over a decade. Now, that's a pretty good test. What we're doing is now we're putting Western Australia in step with where the rest of the world's at. The two major farm lobby groups uh, had been calling for a lifting of the moratorium for a long, long time. So the vast majority of farmers were, were relieved by this decision and, and welcomed it. Of course, not everyone is so delighted with the WA decision. So this has nothing to do with feeding the world. This is about feeding the hungry corporates. Julie Newman lives just an hour away from farmer John Snook, but her views on GM canola are a world away. Well, the main concern is by giving the GM farmers a choice to try GM, you're actually removing the choice for non-GM because the market perception is that we'll all be contaminated, all our canola will be contaminated, unless we prove that it's not contaminated. And that's how it goes in the decade-long debate over genetically modified canola. Rarely has a new technology attracted so much interest and so much acrimonious disagreement. No more so than where the states of Victoria and South Australia meet. This fence line actually represents the border between South Australia and Victoria. On my right is Victoria, where farmers can grow genetically modified canola. On my left here is South Australia, where they can't. Along this border, that discrepancy has thrown up a whole range of management challenges. Small and peaceful Francis, located just inside South Australia, is the unlikely epicentre of this discussion. We'll focus on the experiences of a handful of farmers within 25 kilometres of France's. South Australia still hasn't approved 
farmers who are literally on different sides of the fence. There's Wayne Hawkins, who has the state border running right through his paddocks. Yeah, it's a dotted line right along the Oh yes, road. I can see that dotted line. <laughs> Legally, he could grow GM canola on the Victorian side, but the access road is through South Australia, so he can't transport the seed in and out. Further south, Huck Shepherd is a South Australian organic farmer. His fence line also forms the state border. And just over the fence, his Victorian neighbour can grow GM canola. There's no question about it that, that, that canola pollen does travel and blow over. I mean, you know, this is not going to stop it. Farmers have been lied to by our grower organisations, our politicians, our chemical companies and academics about the benefits of GM crop. The, the yields are no better and the costs are higher. Geoffrey Carraher is a long-time anti-GM campaigner. He hails from Miname, population nine. It's a Victorian town, so this farm is potentially a GM-free island surrounded by a sea of Roundup-ready canola. So Geoffrey Carraher has decided this will be his last canola season. While he's giving it up, 30 kilometres down the road at Apsley, Tom Porter is hailing the arrival of a fourth type of canola to be grown in rotation with his other cereal crops. After opening rains that came bang on time, he's putting in 93 hectares of Roundup Ready canola. I don't mind saying that the, the benefit is weed control, setting it up for the future cropping uh, years and so we can come in with the um, Roundup uh, when it's, what, three or four leaf stage, and then again eight weeks later. So we get a two wax at it with a very effective chemical. So that's, that's terrific. We didn't think it was going to be the highest yielding uh, crop, but it grew like stink and it turned out to be, and it, it really yielded very well. Ryegrass is the curse of canola growers. Radish, its white flower poking through the sea of yellow, is another problem weed. Most farmers who have adopted GM technology have done it to combat these two weeds. We've got issues in here with ryegrass in this particular paddock, so we want to get on top of that and Roundup Ready is the only way we can really do it effectively. This is one of Geoffrey Carraher's paddocks. The weeds are being sprayed out before the annual crop planting. Mr Carraher argues conventionally bred canola that is tolerant to the trizene group of chemicals performs better than the Roundup Ready GM canola. There are some problems with trizenes though. Active constituents such as atrazine do persist in the water table and they've been banned in Europe. Unmoved by this argument, the anti-GM man, along with his agronomic consultant, believes farmers who use the more environmentally benign glyphosate, year in, year out, are setting themselves up for ryegrass that is resistant to the herbicide. All chemicals have some problems, but uh, uh, it's amazing now that the, the people that are selling the uh, are promoting glyphosate are now trying to get in to get uh, simazine and atrazine uh, taken off the list of uh, chemicals. So uh, it's a, it's a, it's if they can get that out, they'll they'll market Australia or the world with GM, and will we have resistance and we'll have no chemicals left to use? We've had a couple of clients this year that have looked at putting glyphosate resistant uh, canola in. Uh, to combat some of their ryegrass paddocks that are, have been seen as bad paddocks. And um, I've been trying to talk them out of that to go into something like a TT canola, which, which we're seeing better results from. This agronomist says he's already seen instances of glyphosate-resistant ryegrass around Horsham. Continuous cropping has contributed to the problem. 